If you're thinking about joining EVE Online, you could uh, play for free. Your friend has personally invited you to play EVE Online through the recruitment program. You can play for free as an alpha pilot with an added bonus of 1 million skill points. Actually, that's uh, 20 days of training. So it's 20 days of training as a member's account without any benefits. So the 1 million skill points will help you get a lot further. I wish I knew about this before I started. And if uh, 20 days of free training wasn't enough, that would be able to get you into the battleship on the first day. Just crazy. You'd be able to do so much on day one with the 1 million skill points, but they also give you 50% off on your first month of membership. So if the $15 was expensive, maybe $7.50 isn't so expensive. Especially if we could find a way to Plex for free. So we pay the $7.50 and then we see if we can pay for the account just by playing the game. Plus you get uh, daily login gifts for the first 15 days you log in. And then um, if you want all of these amazing, amazing benefits, all you have to do is click the link in the description. And then I think you're also added to my friends list so you could talk to me and then maybe we could help each other out in the game that is EVE Online. All right, so we're actually gonna go back and get the venture. So we brought the Merlin here, we have it here. And then actually, if we right click on our Merlin and we say we leave our ship, <clears throat> so now we're just in our capsule. So we're gonna try this uh, board my Corvette. Click to board your complimentary Corvette. So if you click on it, maybe it gives you a ship to fly. So that's amazing. Cool, so it gives you uh, ships. If you don't have a ship, then I guess you could use that. And is there a cooldown? You're already in a Corvette. What if you leave the ship? Okay, so that's why these things aren't really worth anything, because they're 100% free. So it's just so you don't have to, uh, so you don't have to fly around in your capsule. So if you ever have your ship destroyed, you just dock up at the nearest station. It looks like it could even be a player-owned station, and then you could just get a Corvette to fly between the stations. So let's go to personal assets. We go to, um, it'd be our starting location is the only place where we should have anything. So this is basically where we learned everything, where all of our other ships are. So if we set our destination there, we could uh, start heading over there. And then to get back here, we would just, uh, we just right click here and set destination here because this is where Merlin is going to be. So we're already looking on the regional market for the Venture Blueprint. There actually wasn't any here. There was uh, no orders found. So we do, <coughs> we don't know where it is. So if we undock, and if we go back to our starting hub, then we're just gonna go pick up a venture and then bring it back. And then we're gonna see if we could find a venture blueprint out there. We don't know if we're gonna be able to. If not, maybe we could try flying to Jeddah to find one. Cause uh, all the blueprints are actually sold by all the vendors. That's why when you go to blueprints, if you were looking at uh, ships, cause we might wanna look at uh, making ships later. So we could just minimize all these. We go to Frigate's uh, Caldari. So basically, all of these blueprints are going to be available here. We just have to go to one of these stations. So it's always going to cost like 2.5 million. The ship blueprints seem to be pretty expensive. That's why we're going to be starting on... Well, we could maybe do like harvesting equipment or something. It just seems like there's a good opening in the market here. So if we go to a projectile, our ammo is small. It's only like uh, 20,000 and 50,000 and uh, 70,000. Like EMPS is like 100,000. If we go to missiles, if we were going to make some light missiles, it'd be like 160,000 to buy those. So it's still, still not super expensive. And if we go to heavy missiles, maybe we could make some of those too, 900,000. But I think we should probably start at the cheapest things. Maybe hybrid charges, small. Oh, here we go. Antimatter charge S. Those are like 100,000. So maybe we'll start with ammunition. We're going to have to look at our skills. We're going to have to get some skills so that we can actually uh, use these, right? Required skills, industry one. Perfect. So we're just going to be looking for blueprints that don't have any requirements. And then we're going to research them to improve them. And then we'll maybe make copies, eventually make uh, tech 2 ammo. So we're gonna come back when we're back at our home station again for looking for the Venture Blueprint. Cause we might wanna just learn how to make these ships. 
All right, so we're back at our home station. So we could go to Ship Hangar, and then we could uh, pilot the adventure. Maybe we could even bring our badger there. Uh, our comrade, we can't quite fly it yet. So we go to our adventure. We go to fitting. Say we have a uh, we have a weapon. We have a miner on it. So let's just uh, unfit the weapon. We just needed that for the quest, basically. So if we go put the miner one on the adventure. Does it have two minor ones? Yeah, just put two minor ones on the adventure. And then that's uh, pretty much all we need right now. Maybe just the overdrive injector. And then your inventory is empty, your ore hold. You still have some ore here, so I guess we mine some for a little bit. And then uh, we could even like uh, bring everything to the main station or something. I think this has a little bit of space, but not too much. Not enough cargo space. So we can take the overdrive injector off, and then we can put the expanded cargo hold onto the adventure. Yeah, because we got a bunch from uh, just doing the career mission, so this is just going to give us a little bit more inventory space to uh, help transfer everything to our new, our new uh, temporary home station. Oh, the tritanium, so it's an ore hold, so we can't put the tritanium in there. Then I guess we could just bring out most of the things in our actual transport ship. That would make sense. It just doesn't uh, make any sense to leave everything here. So now we have our ship fitted. We have everything ready to go. We could even uh, fit the stasis weapon fire to put some more civilian salvager. Uh, we could put that on the ship. We could put another afterburner on the ship. So there we go. Now our adventure is uh, fully equipped, ready to go to personal assets. We go to Sobeski, I choose you market, set destination three jumps away. So we didn't uh, find that blueprint anywhere. We were watching the adventure blueprint on the regional market on the way. So we're going to have to find out where to get that. We could probably even just go to the Jitta main trade hub or something. So we can start flying, jumping through these stargates. We'll meet you back at the station. All right, so we arrived in the station. So we could just go to the adventure cargo hold. We could right click, we could say, select everything, drag it to the item hanger. Uh, and then the ore hold, we had a little bit of ore in here so we could throw that in there. And then if we go to, um, so we could just uh, right click on it and say strip fitting. So we just remove everything from the adventure for now. So it should all go into the item hanger. Now we could go get a different ship so we could uh, leave the adventure. So leave the adventure. Maybe we'll just go pick up our badger. Maybe we could just throw everything else in the badger. I wonder if we could fit any ships inside the badger. So if we board another Corvette. Then we go to personal assets, and then we go back to the School of Applied Knowledge, uh, undock, uh, set destination, and then just go pick up some more of our stuff. Alright, so if we double click on the badger, we should be able to assemble the ship, and then we should be able to fly the ship. So now this is going to be our transport ship. We could do transport delivery missions or just go do basically pick up things to resell or a whole bunch of things. Transfer goods to the main markets. So if we go to the inventory, we have uh, four 4,000 room for the items. So if we go to the item hanger, maybe if we select all, uh, select all, we can drag all of it into the badger hanger. And then how much is the Kamarat assembled? If we right click on the Kamarat, we say repackage. Are you sure we want to repackage it? Yes, we do. So how much does it weigh? It weighs 5,000. All right, so if we go to the item hanger, oh, if we go to the ship item hanger and then we go fit our ship. If we go down to expanded cargo holds, we could probably put these on the ship. And then maybe we can try to bring our camera out there and hope that nobody destroys us on the way. So if we put uh, three of these on, that should be good. I don't think we really need anything else. We don't have inertia stabilizers or anything. So we could just uh, bring everything with us, including the ship. So the camera, we could actually drag the camera into the Padger hangar hold. And then we're actually bringing our ship with us too. So the Badger can bring more ships. 
I imagine the Merlin in the Heron doesn't weigh as much. Oh, we could just click it 2,500, 2,500. Okay, so maybe we could even come back and pick up ships. So maybe we could have just uh, went with the industrial ship the first time or something. So now that we have our ship in the inventory, uh, five, six, so it would be 1,500 that we have left. So we wouldn't be able to bring anything with us. Yeah, that's good enough, I guess. So we go to the personal assets, and then we could uh, set destination to I choose you market, and then we could undock. And then we could uh, go back there and then come back and maybe pick up the Heron and pick up the other ship. We should just bring some expanded cargo holds next time. And then maybe we could bring back all of these ships. So just be like uh, two more trips then. Just so we don't have to rebuy these items. We don't have to worry about uh, searching the markets to buy them. That would uh, save our money. Alright, so we're just going back to the station to uh, pick up our last inventory, I think. So let's just start looking at industry a little bit, because we know we want the Kaldari destroyer trained a little bit. And then uh, we could train the rest later. We already have um, all of these on our queue, so we know that eventually they're going to be trained. And then eventually our uh, combat ships are going to be upgraded. But for now, we could add uh, industry right after Kaldari Destroyer. And then we could uh, say Industry to level two. And then uh, Advanced Industry, so wonder. Mass production allows the operation of multiple factories. So if we just jump through the gate here. Um, allows the operation of multiple factories. So it's really good because usually if you're doing production, you could only do one job at a time. So with mass production, we could add it uh, under industry here. Then this way, when we actually go to produce things, we could produce uh, more than one thing at a time. It'll really, really help out early, especially if we're doing this. Because we could even make that to level three. So. Could have uh, industry to level three, and then mass production to level three. Once advanced industry, three percent reduction in all manufacturing and research times per level. All right, so we could put that uh, underneath mass production. And then I think we're gonna be doing some uh, mining, mining thing too. So we put advanced industry to level two, and then maybe a level two is good enough. It's just those uh, ones that take like eleven hours. It seems like it takes so long. So now let's go to science. So this will deal with uh, researching blueprints. So let's go after industry. Basically, that should just take like one day to train. So we can go to research. Oh, we're actually gonna have to buy these skill books. So I think we could actually buy these skill books in our starting area. So perfect, we could dock up at the station and then we could uh, buy these skill books when we land there. Okay, so we just uh, landed at the station. So if we go to the skill tree, if we go to science, we could say laboratory operation. Allows you to run a one additional research job per skill level. So just like industry, this one's for research. So if we go view market details, it is a member skill, so you will have to be a member. But uh, the production, I think, was free to play for the most part. So, laboratory operational costs you 500,000, so we could buy that. It's available in the station. Then we could uh, right click metallurgy, view market details. We could buy that one in the station for 500,000. Then we could right click on uh, research, view market details. That one also costs 500,000. So, basically, all of our beginning, beginning money is just gonna go towards skill books. So if we go to the item hanger, we could uh, inject the research skill, inject the metallurgy skill, inject the laboratory operation skill. So we could say right after industry is done training, we could throw laboratory operation. So this will allow you to make uh, one additional research job. So maybe we should put it uh, before industry, right? Because that allow us to uh, research things earlier. So maybe we don't even want the combat ship as quick as we thought we would. Maybe we want an industry before then, right? 
Because we're just upgrading Caldera Destroyer. We could upgrade the ships whenever we want, I guess. So now we're just out removing everything we did before. So if we're learning the Caldera Frigate and the Destroyer, that's not going to help too much at the moment, is it? So we could take those off for now, and then we could uh, put them back on later. So we could add a laboratory operation that'll instantly allow us to start researching things. So research is going to be a good thing, good thing to get early. If we start uh, upgrading blueprints really early, it's a good way to get money and then uh, save yourself money later as well. So we'll get laboratory operation to three, we'll get our research up to level three, maybe, maybe a level two. Metallurgy up to level two. All right, there we go. And that's production level three. So now we got a uh, laboratory operation, science, metallurgy, and research. So we can maybe just throw these on the end, right? Those take like three hours to research. That one takes like 10 hours to research. So we're not gonna worry about that one. Just leveling these ones to level three is fine. Then just in production, if we just change it to uh, can train now, we just need those trained up to level two and level three. So what else is there? Resource processing. So we're gonna need our resource processing earlier. So we're probably going to be mining as well. So now we need to add a reprocessing. 3% bonus to ore and ice processing yield per scale. So actually, if we don't really reprocess too much early, we can just throw reprocessing at the front of the tree. That'll work for now. So whenever we're uh, reprocessing ores, we're going to be able to reprocess uh, more. I believe we also need it for flying a bigger ship or something. So we got some reprocessing scales on the tree. So three doesn't actually really unlock anything. So maybe we'll just uh, do reprocessing to level two for right now. Then we could add some more of it. And then if we go to our inventory. So we just added some uh, production and some uh, resource processing, some science scales to our tree. If we go to the ship hangar, we could pilot the badger. Then actually, we brought a bunch of expanded cargo holds, so now when we try to pilot the Badger, we could actually fit it out with four of them, and then maybe bring some more ships back to our new station. So if we go to the item hangar and then just uh, equip all of these, it'll bring our storage space up from 4,000 up to 7,800. So if we drag the Heron into the Badger's inventory hold, and maybe the Merlin, maybe the Venture. All right, and then we don't really have anything else in the inventory. What if we uh, strip the fitting on the Corvette? Would we be able to bring a Corvette with us? If we repackage it, repackage the Corvette. How much do? How much space do they take? Two thousand five hundred. All right, so the same as the frigates. So we don't really have any space for anything. Ship hanger. All right, so we're good to go then. We got the Heron, we got the Merlin, we got the Venture, we got the Badger, we got um, all of the modules. There's nothing in the item hanger. All that's left here is our Corvettes. So what if we just assemble the ship again then? So now we're good to go. We can set our destination to the I choose you market set destination and then we jump three jumps and then we'll have uh, successfully transferred everything back at home and then we'll have uh, some new scales on the training queue so once we get there we're probably going to look at the venture and then look at the certificates and then uh, try to upgrade the venture so we could uh, mine things like uh, that ship that he just had there and we just arrived at the I Choose You market. So it's pretty cool that ship can, this one ship can carry other ships within itself. Because so if you look at the ship hangar, these are the ships that we have. And then if we go drag them from the ship's inventory into the item hangar, we're going to have uh, more ships. So now our Merlin, our Heron, our Venture is here. Everything is here. And then we could even go to our ship and we could uh, strip the fitting. Sure you want to strip the fitting? Sure. And go ship hangar. Maybe we could uh, pilot the venture or something. 
then we could even uh, repackage these ships. So let's just uh, right click, let's, uh, re uh, let's uh, repackage it. So we could always assemble them later. It's just gonna maybe make it easier to see what we have so we could uh, just unpackage it. So we right click and we should be able to stack everything. So now the badgers are in a stack. So now what did our venture have? If we go to the venture fitting, uh, we didn't have anything. So let's go to the item hanger. Let's put on the miner one. Then I guess while we're mining, we could uh, look at things. So I guess uh, mining really is a good thing to do every single time when you're starting. <laughs> every single time you're starting, just go into mining. It'll give you time to look at things while your skills are researching. And then by day three, a bunch of skills are being researched and you'll actually be able to do stuff. So I think we just need the one MN afterburner. Huh, what if we click on uh, the Merlin? <clears throat> Did it have more afterburners on it? I'm not sure, I thought we had more of those. One civilian afterburner. Skill training completed. Oh, we could just use the civilian afterburner, I guess. So we go to the venture, go to the item hanger, then we equipped it with the civilian afterburner. That'll be good enough for now. So we just got the adventure, we got two mining lasers, we got the civilian afterburner, the overdrive injector to increase our speed. So now we could just go undock and then maybe go mine and that'll give us time to look at our ships, look at all the ship tree and uh, plan everything. And then we're actually making progress because before because before we were just sitting in the station and we were just looking at everything and we we're sitting in the station and not getting too much done. So if we go to the overview on the right hand side, there is some asteroid belts here. So let's maybe sort them by distance, try to go to the closest one, warp to within zero kilometers. So also we could go to the venture, we could show info. There's also a uh, mastery for the venture, so I'll give you recommendations for what to do for the venture. The venture only takes uh, 10, hour, 10 hours to train the level 2 certificate compared to the 3 days for the combat ships. It takes uh, 10 days for this one compared to the 38 days for the combat ship. Oh, okay, 129 days, 447, that one still takes a while. So what are we going to get for our first uh, first uh, thing that we mine? Maybe we'll get Scordite, because Scordite is going to have both of them. Oh, Pyroxers is going to have everything. So we can see the Vicious Pyroxers in the overview here. We could right click, we could say save location, Pyroxers, um, S1. So we could say Pyroxers, save one, folder, personal locations. Um, maybe we should make a new folder or something. Or maybe we could even drag the location to the folder. So we could just save it to personal locations and hit submit. And then when we're back at the station, we could just uh, right click in space, personal locations, pyroxers, and it would say warp to within zero kilometers. And then it would actually teleport right beside the pyroxers. So we have to be within 10 kilometers of the pyroxers. We could lock on with the miners, and then we could start mining the pyroxers. And we could even uh, stop our ship or we could uh, orbit within 500 meters so we're always moving. Maybe put on the afterburners. So that would just uh, protect us anything happened, in case anything happened. Although I don't think we really need to, but... So we're orbiting the asteroid and we're mining it. So we'll come back uh, when we have a full inventory maybe. Or we could uh, talk about things while we're mining it, but I think that's good enough for this episode. It's around like 30 minutes. Oh, okay, actually, we could uh, record a little bit more. So, while we're sitting here orbiting the asteroid and mining it, or we could just stop the ship. We'll just stop the ship. We don't want to get uh, seasick, so our ship's going to stay still while we mine the asteroid. So, there's different types of asteroids to mine. The Valdespire, to show information. And then we go to industry. So this will give you the most titanium, right? 415 units for each one you reprocess. And then the scordite show information. It gives you less titanium, but it gives you some pyrite. 
pyrite so if you want a more tritanium you just want to go for Valdespar. if you need some pyrite you go for scordite and then the pyroxers show information so it would give a uh, less tritanium less pyrite it, but it would give some mexalon and noxium which we're going to need for construction later so is pyroxers much different than the Valdespar? it's a 350 oh 415 Scordite was what? 346. Okay, so Scordite has a little bit more. Pyroxers has the least Tritanium out of everything. No, Scordite has the least Tritanium. Pyroxers has a little bit more Tritanium. But it has uh, no Pyrite. So I guess Pyroxers is mainly for these two minerals then. And tritanium, and then a scordite would be for pyroxers or pyrite. All right, cool. So we looked at a few of the asteroids. These are going to be the asteroids available to you in the high security area. There's going to be three different sizes. There's going to be the basic asteroid. So if we show info, it's going to say there's no extra benefits. But then there's the medium-sized asteroid, right? You can see it's bigger. So we show information. We could say it gives a 5% higher yield, so you probably would want something like that. And then uh, the one that we're mining, so this would be the biggest type of rock. So you say show information, and it says that it gives a 10% higher mineral yield, 10% higher yield. So if you do see these rocks out in space, try to get the bigger rocks before the smaller rocks. So I think we're just going to sit here and mine this. And we did have some time, right? 5, 4, 3, yep. So if we go to the skills, maybe we could uh, put the skill tree on. So if we right click on the adventure, show information, go to the certificates. Let's see, what does it recommend? It recommends that we do navigation for acceleration, which is already on the tree. Resource harvesting. Oh, mining upgrades too. So we, do we have this skill? Buy and train. So we're going to have to buy this skill. Uh, required for harvesting minor laser upgrade and minor laser upgrade too so I think we probably will get this skill then so if we're going for the second certificate mining upgrades um, view market details so there probably will be one in the system so 100,000 we could probably sort by jumps for this book oh it's gonna be two jumps away so location set destination so let's just go jump to the station that's two jumps away and then get the scale block and then we'll come back and mine here we have the location saved so we don't need the afterburner equipped so we could right click and we could uh, align to no we can't align to so let's go to the general view let's turn off the mining lasers to collect our harvest and then we could jump through the gate so we'll meet you at the other side Alright, so we just arrived in the station, the Science and Trade Institute. So it's uh, the actual station where we were just at, right? Oh, no, it's related to one of these stations that we started in. So if we go right click on the adventure here, right click show information. We were trying to get some, uh, get some suggestions for how to better our mining ship. So it said to get our mining upgrades too. So if we right click, we say view market details. Then we sort by price. So there's going to be one in the station. It's going to cost 100,000. We have all these skills required to train this skill. So. It says we already have these required skills to train this skill. We're not 100% sure. If we go item. If we go to the character tree. It says it's in a resource processing. Because it said we had to train it, right? <laughs> we got a little bit confused here, so show information for the adventure, resource processing, level 2. So it says we have to buy and train, so we obviously don't have the skill. So let's go to the inventory, and we just bought the skill. Oh, no we didn't, we didn't buy it. So we have to double click the mining upgrades, we buy it for 100,000. And then we could inject the skill. So now if we right click on the adventure and say, or can we just hold the left mouse button on it? Oh, no, there's no radio view. Okay. 
so show information level two mining upgrades now we can actually add it to the training queue so if we open the character sheet maybe we could uh, drag it oh we can drag it perfect so mining upgrades too it's going to take three hours to upgrade so maybe we could even add this up uh, before reprocessing so now we got mining upgrades one mining upgrades uh two on the way it's going to allow us to use better harvesters all right what else does it recommend so the shield tanking we already have those on the tree tackling we have those so navigation and what is the level three certificate let's go to resource harvesting core gas cloud harvesting it's gonna take nine minutes to do that so if we right click on it view market details can we buy that no there really isn't any and it's an expensive scale so we're gonna have to wait on that one but it does say to get mining oh mining upgrades level three and mining level four scale it using mining lasers five percent bonus to mining turret yield per scale Five percent reduction per skill level and CPU penalty of mining upgrade modules. Plus, it gives you better modules. So maybe we could add the mining upgrades uh, down somewhere here after all that other stuff trains. Or we could just add it to the top. It doesn't really matter. If we wanted to train something quickly, we could move it up there. So let's go put mining upgrades. Let's go with mining. So now we pretty much have a one week of things to train on our queue. But we're going to be really good at uh, mining and reprocessing and creating our own ships and creating uh, everything by ourselves. So we have all of that done. We just came here to get the scale essentially. So while we're mining, we could probably look at other things and then um, we could go back to where we were. So I choose you market set destination. So we did everything we needed to do here. All right, so now we're just outside the I Choose You trade hub that we're currently based off of. So if we right click in space, we see our personal locations is saved by Roxers S1 warp to within zero kilometers. And then we're gonna warp to right beside it. So there actually is an industrial ship that we could research to transporter or to a reprocessing center. So. It's all right to leave it here we could bring it to another place later but uh we don't want to reprocess it at this station so we could also look at uh see if we could make some profits by just picking up ores and then bringing it to a station refining it and then picking up ores so we don't have to mine it ourselves although we are getting into the mining aspect since we're researching it a bit so the vicious pyroxers was right here we teleported right to the rock so let's um, use the mining lasers to mine the pyroxers. But actually, our mining lasers should be split up, right? So we could mine the massive uh, scordite. Because essentially, if a mining laser mines out an asteroid and the other mining laser is not finished yet, it's not going to get any any minerals. So we just send uh, one laser on two different types of asteroids, preferably the biggest ones. And then we're going to end the episode by just changing our scales, right? We have these. We've seen that uh, Mining 4 is actually going to give us better turrets right away. And uh, Ice Harvesting, Gas Cloud Harvesting. Oh, Gas Cloud Harvesting is free to play. So maybe, maybe Gas Cloud Harvesting would be good for free. So we're going to let Mining Upgrades train up to level 1. And then we're just going to get Mining 4 right away. But then we're also going to add Kaldari Frigate up here. Just so we can train Kaldari Destroyer to level 1, just so that's all done. Just so we don't have to worry about it later. And then we'll put Kaldari Destroyer to level 2. And that uh, 7 hour one, we could actually train it at any time. So up to level 2 is good. And then we'll get the Mining Frigate. So we'll start uh, getting the Mining Frigate after the Destroyer has been trained. Or we could do the mining frigate before because considering we're not really going to be using those right away we'll just uh say we're going to be able to get those for tomorrow so maybe even the mining frigate we could add to the queue and then maybe even the caldari industrial we could add to the queue and then as we keep finding new things as we're sitting here mining in space we could maybe add things or remove things and change our queue I think we're going to actually render the last two episodes. We have to render both of them. 
So basically, we're just going to mine the Pyroxers. Then if we go to personal assets, um, we have the I choose you market in our personal assets. So we could just set destination. Now our destination is set to our home station. Then we just have to right click here and click dock. And then we dock and dock from the station. Then we right click and say, um, personal locations and then when these are mined out we could actually move around there's a whole bunch of asteroids it's a big asteroid field so you could like uh, fly oh we're on like the edge of the asteroid field so you could basically fly around here or there's other asteroid fields if uh, there is no asteroids here then you could uh, easily just go to one of these ones there seems to be five different asteroid belts in the system hopefully they should have something so there we go we're just gonna be here mining for a little bit oh, what do we do yeah we're just gonna be here mining for a little bit and then we're gonna go oh in general it would show a better thing that's yes, all the asteroid belts no it doesn't show asteroid belts all right so there's the introduction to eve so you just uh mine for a bit and it because you're actually making some progress while you're looking at everything and if you were trying to do this afk you definitely could give you the complete chance to actually look over everything while you don't have to focus on anything.